Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome to the Jesus is the Answer television broadcast where Jesus is being lifted up. And he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto me. Amen. That's what we're here to do is lift up the name of Jesus. And on these <clears throat> broadcasts, we're here to share some very powerful, powerful testimonies. Amen. Of people whose <clears throat> lives have been changed, touched, or they want to make a statement. Amen. And so the main statement that we're going to make is Jesus is the answer. Let's give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus is coming back again. Well, today we have Mr. Vern Robinson that's going to be on the show. And he was convicted, amen, for a crime that he did not commit. And uh, during the pandemic or, you know, whatever, he wrote a book. Maybe he wrote it a long time ago, but he wrote a book and it's called All Men Are Created. It's a powerful book. Amen. I got it right here, but I just don't want no glare on you. There it is on the screen right there. Amen. And so he brought a copy with him. And this is a very powerful book uh, where he starts where he's a, he's a kid and he talks about how he was wrongly convicted. And my God. And so what him and I want to do, we want to go to the White House and sit with Joe Biden or whoever's the president when we get there and get his exoneration. Now, we can't get him pardon because he had already served the 30 years of time but you know maybe they'll make up for the lost time right <laughs> so, so anyway uh we're going to introduce you to uh the our, this great man of god and he came to jesus as the answer he and his fiance were baptized in the name of the lord jesus christ his fiance was filled with the holy ghost but he has yet to be filled but we're praying with him he's gonna get it <laughs> amen because we're gonna win that battle too amen so I want to share this uh, uh, small promo about his book to kind of give you a little information on what the book is about before we talk to Mr. Vern Robinson. Let's look at this video. This is an historical narrative of a 20th century Afro-American man who becomes a member of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s and a murder suspect in the 1990s. He was convicted of a crime that he did not commit but incarcerated for 30 years. This is a chronicle of his journey. All Men Are Created, The Painful Odyssey of a Wrongly Convicted Man by Vernon M. Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce this wonderful man of God and hear his story and hear his plight. Amen. He was, again, convicted of a crime and his book is out right now on Amazon.com. <laughs> you should go pick it up. Read this book. Amen. Because we are on a journey for his exoneration by the president <laughs> of the United States or by the powers that be that uh, wrongly convicted this man. And he served 30 years. Now, he's been out. He, he comes to Jesus as the answer church. He's been out for about three years. And so I want you to welcome this, this gentleman right now. Please welcome Mr. Vernon M. Robinson. How are you doing, Mr. Robinson? I'm doing wonderful. Say hello I'm to doing everybody great. out there. Right hello. There. How is everyone? Jesus is the answer. Amen. Well, Dr. Robinson, uh, you, are, you have an amazing story here. And I just want to uh, kind of share. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you that I kinda, you kind of jot down here. And so can you give me a brief outline of the major issues involved in your conviction? So kind of give us an outline of how you got convicted or, you know, what was the de details on your conviction? I was uh, a successful executive in 1988, 1989, when the doors were blown in virtually. Mm hmm I was arrested for a crime that had happened almost 30 years before, 1963. Mm. I was uh, charged with the murder of a lady in the Hollywood Hills mm -hmm. in 1963. A lady I did not know, had no eyewitnesses, but the, the downside of that was, and I would ask anyone in the audience, mm -hmm to picture a situation where you're confronted right now mm -hmm. at this day and time mm -hmm. as we speak 
and asked to pinpoint your whereabouts 30 years ago on this particular day. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the and, and there was a perfect storm. First of all, being charged with a crime 30 years in the past, there's no way virtually for you to uh, provide alibi witnesses. All of my alibi witnesses were dead mm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was no physical evidence mm -hmm. from the original crime scene. Mm -hmm. All of the detectives who investigated, the original detectives that went to the crime scene, searched it uh, in 1963, October 3rd, 1963, mm -hmm. were dead and had been dead for at least 10 years mm. before the trial. Mm -hmm. At one point, it was motioned in court mm -hmm that if the state has no physical evidence, then obviously you have no crime. But mm. that never, you know, facts never stopped that train. And it felt like a, a train. Mm -hmm. uh, the media uh, descended upon you mm -hmm. after being fed information f directly from the district attorney mm -hmm. and the police. Mm -hmm. Also, there was involved a prototype, an experimental uh, computer network. Mm -hmm. It was called the Automated Fingerprint Identification System. Mm -hmm. It had been developed and and distributed around 1985, mm -hmm. but from 1985 till early at 1989, mm -hmm. it had been an abysmal failure. Wow. Uh, they couldn't get it to work right. Mm -hmm. Cities like, for example, Los Angeles Police Department mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. at Parker Center. Mm -hmm was investing and spending a million dollars a year mm -hmm. on this prototype computer system that was supposed to digitize fingerprints. Mm. And with the frustration of all of the false positives and the problems that they were having over those years, mm -hmm. there was some upper level city council uh, and government pressure mm -hmm. to cut off the funding mm -hmm. for this prototype computer. Mm -hmm. And in response to that, they supposedly went, their story is that they went down in the archives and took all of the unsolved cases that had fingerprint evidence from 1965 to 1985. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, the evidence from this crime happened in 1963. Mm. So even in the beginning, the the uh, file had mm -hmm. been misplaced. Well, well let, me, let me let me stop you right here. What? How did they? How did they tie you up to a crime that you? Where were you at that time? I was in naval boot camp in NTC Naval Training Center in San Diego. So you from were in San Diego. June. She got right to late October 1963. Okay, so wait a minute. So. This woman got killed in Hollywood. In Hollywood, 150 miles away. Right. And, but how did your name even get involved in all this? Well, in the beginning, the police department said that this new computer system identified Vernon M. Robinson mm -hmm. as uh, through fingerprints. Mm. The fingerprints they were using came from... Uh, arrest during the time in 1966 to 68 when I was a member of the Black Panther Party. Mm. It had no other arrests, had gone on to get a degree in college. So wait a minute, you mean to tell me <laughs> they convicted you, uh, they convicted you off of a faulty computer that they were just <laughs> trying to experiment with? Just so to from test. an experimented computer, your fingerprints came up for something that you had dealt with with the Black Panthers back in the 60s. And, and this it, crime happened... In 1963. Right, 1963. So you were in the Black Panthers in... In 1990. I was in the Black, Black Panthers from 1966 to 1972. Okay, so you were part of the Black Panthers. And so yes. with this experimental computer... Your fingerprints came up, but somebody else's fingerprints came up too. Yes, that was more likely to be the actual perpetrator. Right. We don't want to actually point nobody out, you know, because you're innocent until proven guilty. But the fingerprints that they came up with, uh, there was somebody else more likely who was in the area 
at the time, and he was more likely to uh, have committed the crime. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, what the police said, LAPD, their uh, initial assertion, their mm. announcement to all of the media, major mm. media, mm. Good Morning America, Today's Show, all of them, mm -hmm. was that this uh, experimental computer mm -hmm. had identified me. Right. When my investigators dug further mm -hmm. into the situation, they found that the computer was not sophisticated enough at that time mm -hmm. to identify individual fingerprints. What it did was the operator had to ask for a field. Right. Give me the 10 or 20 most similar right. fingerprint patterns. Right. So now what, what, what happened mm -hmm. with all the other 10 or 20 other, other LAPD people? LAPD to this day will not divulge who the other nine fingerprints were because uh -huh. there was a field of 10. Right. What we were able to find, my investigators found that there was a man, mm -hmm. Paul Felix Fale is mm -hmm. his name, mm -hmm. who was at the time in 63 mm -hmm. dubbed the... Hollywood rapists. The Hollywood rapists. And all of his crimes from 1955 to 1963 uh -huh. were in a one mile radius of the crime scene. Wow. When they said they initially picked him up, but they let him go. When my investigators dug deeper, they found that he was a major informant right. for the Hollywood Rampart oh. Police Department. Oh, so he turned on you. <laughs> he didn't turn on me. Not turn on you, he, but he, since he was an informant. He, they let him go and said in the records that he was, you know, he didn't fit the profile, whatever the profile was. Okay. Now, I heard you <clears> speak <throat> before. And you shared some trouble statistics relating to incarceration in America. Can you change some of that information with our audience? Sure. St it's statistics about incarceration. That's what Tell it us is. a little bit about that. Well, one of the things that I did when I was finally released uh, was to assign myself, or, or it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. I was brought to understand that I had a duty, a job, mm -hmm. uh, and what I term being a voice for the voiceless. There are over, over two million individuals in prisons and jails mm -hmm. in the United States of America. We lead the entire world mm -hmm. in incarceration. Mm -hmm. For example, um, we have more, the, the, the system is called so many persons per 100,000 population. Mm -hmm. America's incarceration rate mm -hmm. per 100,000 persons is 638 persons. For every 100,000, they are in prison. Wow. That exceeds Russia, China, India, <laughs> you know, some of the worst uh, totalitarian governments on mm -hmm. earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, it include it, it exceeds... The whole European Union, which includes Spain, France, Germany, England, Denmark, and Sweden combined. We have more of our citizens locked behind prison walls mm -hmm. than any other country mm -hmm. by, you know, multiples of 10. Right. The other problem is that incarceration is not the end of the nightmare. Right. Right. Um, due to the exception that was written into the 13th Amendment, mm -hmm. Constitutional Amendment, mm -hmm. which says slavery shall be outlawed mm -hmm. except upon conviction of felony, mm -hmm. means that 47 states as of today take away your voting rights. It's mm -hmm. called disenfranchisement mm -hmm. once you have been convicted of a crime. Right. For many of those states, mm -hmm. about 27 of them, mm -hmm. you can't even get your voting rights back after the after fact. Conviction. After a conviction. So you get after, your... In other words, no, after you are released from prison right, right. and released from parole, right. you still can't vote. This anointed, this book mm -hmm. was your answer uh, once you got out of prison. Yes. This was your way of expressing your uh, discontentment 
with what had happened to you? I started writing down the facts, you know, in, in rough form, in rough draft, while uh, early after I got, you know, was uh, in prison. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't find, after 20 some odd years, I put it aside because I didn't really see any future. Mm-hmm. I really had accepted the fact that I would die in prison. Mm. One of the reasons why I came to Jesus once I was out Mm -hmm. was because I was saved from that fate Mm -hmm. through no uh, efforts of my own. Mm -hmm. I had been denied parole 15 times in a row. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, out of a clear blue, I was taken back before the same people. Mm -hmm. And they said, we've looked at your case and we don't see any evidence that you ever killed anybody. Now, that's bittersweet after 30 years. Wait a minute. They told you in your parole hearing, they told you in a parole hearing that, that we don't they don't see no evidence that you killed anyone. And it took them 30 years to do that? Well, what they uh, explained <laughs> was that the government, the yeah, system, yeah. wants to maintain the sanctity of conviction. In other words, once it's convicted, everybody in the system turns 180 degrees yeah. and uh, defends the conviction. Well, I hate to say this. It's too bad Trump wasn't in office like... 20, 20 or 30 years ago, you well, would have been out. You know, every goodbye ain't gone. Trump yeah. is not completely no, free I'm not yet. talking about Trump. I'm not talking about him. I'm just saying how <clears throat> the, uh, uh, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian went and got a lot of innocent people released. Yes. You know, during the, I, 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 I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not anybody's supporter. I don't get into politics because I preach the gospel. And I don't want to take a side to either one because I want everybody to get saved. Democrats. Republicans, freedom folk, whoever. I just want to preach the gospel to you to get you saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. But uh, the thing is, I, I think Trump did a, a lot of things that he said he was going to do. And he released a lot of innocent prisoners, you know. So I, I just wish that he was president 20, 30 yeah. years ago. I, when I came out, uh, naturally, it would be an understatement to say that I was grateful. Yeah. And I knew that it came from a power much greater than myself. Yes. And along with being a voice for the voiceless, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I knew that it would require me to stop playing with religion. Yes. And just, you know, stand up and tell the truth. Yes. yes. About what happened to me, how yes. I was saved. Yes. And so therefore, I took up the, the uh, goal uh, the project mm-hmm. of writing, taking those old notes I'd had, right. added to them, right. explaining actually how it feels to a human being right. to have the gates closed behind you. Yeah, but then you came up with this great book right here. Yes. Uh, let me put it over And that here. was through God's go- guidance. <laughs> I got it over here, y'all. So and this just great before book. you uh, talk about the promo, yeah. uh, Next week, it was a week from yesterday on the mm-hmm. 10th, mm-hmm. At, uh, for those of you that are in the Southern California area, mm-hmm. at Long Beach City College, mm-hmm. we're going to have a speaking, I'll be speaking, mm-hmm. and then have a book signing. Okay. Uh, well, we'll definitely be there with our cameras. Sure hope so. All right. So we want to say thank you so much, Dr. Vern, amen, Vern M. Robinson. Uh, he's a member of Jesus is the Answer Church. So... So after all you've been through, you came out, got baptized in Jesus' name. We're praying with him. He's going to get the Holy Ghost because I claim that in Jesus' name. But not only is he getting, he came out and get his life straight, uh, he's getting everything straight, but he's getting his soul straight. Amen. Because after all that time, you don't want to go through all that and then have to go to the other prison. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the I'm, fiery prison. No, but anyway, I'm through with prison, period. Yes. So Dr. J- Dr. Vern... Uh, thank you so much for joining us today on Jesus is the Answer. And go get the book. Look at this promo. This is an historical narrative of a 20th century Afro-American man who becomes a member of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s and a murder suspect in the 1990s. He was convicted of a crime that he did not commit, but incarcerated for 30 years. This is a chronicle of his journey. All men are created. The painful odyssey of a wrongly convicted man by Vernon M. Robinson. 
Well, bless the Lord now. Uh, we, again, we want to thank Vernon M. Robinson. Go get the book. Amazon and Barnes. Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. You can get this book on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. It's available in hardback and softback. And also, it's also available e -book. on an e-book. Amen. So you can download it and uh, read this in, on your Kindle. So let's go to this promo. Amen. Uh, for Jita Church. Dr. Vern, he's getting ready to go into surgery for his uh, hip. So I, I was just telling him off camera that we're going to pray for you, amen, and that God be with you when you go through this surgery. And when you get out, we're going to run this book, amen. So I'm encouraging everybody to please get this book, amen. I'm going to put it on this side, and it's on uh, Amazon.com, Amazon. and it's on Barnes & Noble, all right? We love you. God bless you. Remember, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Lego, uh, minister here at Jesus is the Answer Ministries. Uh, my testimony is that when we first started the consecration in uh, January, in the middle of January, um, I needed my rent and I had like all these bills that are piling up and I started praying and I started asking the Lord. I said, Lord, I said, I'm a faithful tither. I said, and you promised you would rebuke the devourer for my sake. 
and I needed like $500. Uh, somebody I knew, he asked me, hey, you want to meet for coffee? And I was like, okay. And then he called, texted me again, you, I really want to meet you for coffee. And I was like, okay. And I said, okay, they're wonderful. I'm, I'm excited to see you. So I went to, we actually ended up meeting at another place. And before, when, we, when he was leaving, he said, can you walk me to the car? So I walked into the car and he hands me an envelope. He says, this is for helping me out a long time ago. And I was like, oh, okay. I gave him a hug. I got in the car. And I opened it up as five hundred dollars, and I was expecting like a hundred bucks, you know. <laughs> and so I thank the Lord because it was what I needed, and I wanted to give a seed. So I was like, Lord, I want to give fifty dollars seed, and all of a sudden my husband said, I'm going to give you an extra fifty dollars. So he covered it. Um, and as far as the prayer cloth, you know, I repent because I've had mine in my bedroom by my side. It's in my dresser. But recently the Lord just showed me that with a prayer cloth, you can actually lay it on what ails you. You have the anointed oil, put the anointed oil upon the cloth and put it on whatever body part it is that you need healing for so that the Lord can heal you. Amen. So that, that was what I wanted to lend with regards to the prayer cloth. That it's, you know, it's very important because it is anointed by our bishop. And he will, you know, the, the, uh, the anointing goes through just as Paul did. Um, or Peter, he gave pieces of cloth which was anointed by Peter and people were getting healed from their ailments when they laid the cloth upon them or held the cloth in them. So that's what I have to say. Amen. Lord bless you. Lord, this is Bishop Ernest Johnson inviting you to join us for an exciting move of God at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Our services are Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Sunday School, 11 a.m. our morning worship service, and Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. is our Bible Enrichment Bible Study. We want you to come on out, bring the family, bring your friends, because God's got a word for you. And you can also tune in live to all of our services on Jita TV, J I T A TV dot O R G, or to our Facebook Live. Just type in the name Facebook Live slash Ernest Johnson. Amen. And tune in to our Bible studies Tuesday night, 7 30 p.m. until 9 p.m. and Sunday morning, 11 40, amen, to 2 p.m. Join us, amen, in service or online for a powerful time in the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you there.